Oh, some classic love songs there. Uh, but what is Santa's doing when day all about? If you came in late to the party, then Dylan Foster Evans is here now, uh, who is a lecturer in Welsh literature and the Welsh language at Cardiff University, and uh, you know all about it, don't you? Uh, I, know, I know a few things about her. I will <laughs> overstate my case on uh, <laughs> expertise and romance. But, so who uh, was she, well. first, first of all? Well, what we know about her, really... Um, comes in the first place, the main thing, from the 14th century. So 700 years ago, there's a poem by a very famous poet called David Ap Gwilym. Now, he was a famous as a love poet, famous also for uh, his romantic affairs with married women. And he has a poem to Duin when, when he asks Duin when for help um, to uh, take a sort of love message to his married lover, Morvid. Uh, he calls on God as well to help him to keep Morvid's husband away. <laughs> Um, he is quite cheeky. Um, he, he's sort of aware that uh, Duin Wen might not want to take part in this kind of uh, escapade. But uh, he promises her in the poem that she won't be thrown out of heaven, that it's fine to carry on. So, so that poem is a very nice poem from um, about 1340 or something. But really, the, the, the Duin Wen that we know today is all down to Yolo Morganug, um, Edward Williams, who 200 years ago was a, um, a very intelligent, self-taught, um, imaginative um, stonemason from the uh, Cowbridge area. Um, and he, where he found a gap, I think, in the tradition, where he found that a story was missing, he was very uh, willing to create one. So he creates a story uh, about Duin Wen, uh, and that's the one that we, we really know today. So was she a real person? Um, it's very hard to say, because if she was alive, then mm-hmm. she would have been alive in about the 5th or 6th centuries. Um, there's a tradition that she was the daughter of a king called Brachan Brachenyog. Um, so she might well have been, although it's said that Brachan had 24 daughters who were all saints, which ah, right. make you wonder a bit. <laughs> but Yolo Morganog, what he said, he, he, he tells a story that Duin Wen um, was in love with a young man called Melon de Vodris. But he was keen to move the relationship on to a, a sort of physical level before they got married, and she said no to that. He was enraged. He leaves her, um, and doing then prays to God in her. You know, she's scared and, and upset, um, and God sends down a, a magic potion, and the two of them drink this, and um, doing then is cured of her sadness, and Melon is is cooled off, quite literally. He's turned into a block of ice, and God then thanks doing then and gives her three wishes. And these are the interesting ones then. The first one was to defrost Melon. The second one was that she should hear all the prayers of lovers so that she could either help them gain the object of their affection or cure them of their unrequited love, if that's how it was. And the final wish, ironically in a way, is that she herself should never marry. So according to the story, she lived alone as a nun then at the Church of Sandwin. Uh, on Anglesey. So how should we celebrate? Should we take uh, this elixir that uh, Santa Steinwin had and uh, drink it for ourselves in the form of champagne this evening? Do we send anonymous cards? What What do we do? Absolutely. I think we can do anything we like. We can, we can book a favourite restaurant. I mean, they're likely to be more empty than they are uh, on Valentine's Day. Um, I've been trailing in all day as the tight man's Valentine's. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, that maybe says more about you than, uh, than doing when, I don't know. Um, but the um, thing in Wales is worth noting is that we do have our own Valentine's traditions in both languages, and certainly in Welsh uh, we call Valentine Follant, and there are poems, sort of Follant poems, going back to the 17th century. So doing when isn't a Welsh Valentine's Day because we have a Valentine's Day which is Valentine's Day. Yeah, so is that, your, um, is, that your, uh, is that something that really annoys you when people say, she's the Welsh St. Valentine's? Well, I understand that it explains things, but the problem then is it just sort of collapses the two together yeah. and suggests uh, that almost we're being just a bit fussy by sort of rebranding something. But it's actually, interestingly, the tradition linking doing when with love goes back to the 14th century. The tradition linking Valentine with love doesn't go back that far, really. Um, the, the link between Valentine and lo- love is more to do with celebrating spring and then celebrating lovers because most people wouldn't know anything about Valentine other than he has a day where people celebrate love. But doing Ren does have this story that's told in, in schools, on TV programmes, in books. So in a way, it's much more accessible, really, and meaningful than Valentine, which um, Valentine himself doesn't really say anything about love. I've got one question for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are you uh, celebrating tonight, then? (laughs) 
Well, I made sure this morning that I had remembered <laughs> <coughs> flowers and cards because, especially saying that was coming on the radio, it would have been <laughs> unfortunate if I had done that and not sorted things at home at first. Um, but I think we'll have a nice meal at home tonight. Uh, put the kids to bed reasonably early and have a, a relaxing meal at home. I think. Dylan, thank you so much for joining me and telling me all about Santa Steinwin. Uh, Dylan Foster Evans, a lecturer of Welsh literature and the Welsh language at Cardiff University.